everyone welcome back to engineers creations today's tutorial i'll be showing you how to customize your own chip bags using silhouette studio i personally uh design all my stuff using the silhouette studio i do have previous tutorials showing how to customize everything using microsoft word um the first thing that i will say is i'm using the version 4.1 I don't know if my uh, Silhouette Studio might look different than yours because you might have a different version. I am in no way a professional with the software. I am just going to show you how I do customize my stuff. Also, I do have um, the Business Edition. So again, I'm on version 4.1. I think the newest one right now is 4.2. I have never updated my, ver uh, my Silhouette Studio. So again, 4.1 and I am using business edition. So it might look different than yours. This is a, a screen that will pop up if I want to update it. And I will put later because I never have updated. Then once it comes up, I will start showing you. See, it says 4.1 and business edition. Once it comes up, I am going to show you how we create our own template and all that fun stuff. Once it pops up. The first thing that you're going to do is on your right corner, left panel, there's a, diff a whole bunch of different icons on here. We do have to change the page settings. Make sure that you are using an 8.5 by 11 sheet of paper. Um, so right here, you will go to the top panel. Let me delete all this. Oh, okay, so right here on the right, the first one, it has like a piece of paper. You're going to click on that. And then your panel is going to show, show up. That's, this is called the page setup panel. Right here where it says size, you're going to put the size of sheet of paper that you're using, which is an 8.5 by 11. And right here it will also say orientation. And right now it's on portrait mode, so you do need to switch this to landscape. So your paper should look like this, landscape mode. And right here it says the show cut border. And, and that's basically anything I change I don't change nothing else so right here on your left it has all these different different icons the one the fourth one down is your shapes you will click on the shapes and the first shape is a square you're going to click on that and you're going to make any size shape on your page it does not matter the size now because you still have the shape selected you do need to go back to your left panel and click on that arrow so you can have the arrow selected once you have the arrow selected you need to click on your square that we just created and then the panel on the top will show width and height on your width you're going to manually type 2.52 enter and on your height you're going to type 6.44 enter these are the same measurements i gave when we use microsoft word your measurements never change that's the number one question i always get asked well what measurements am i going to use in another software you cannot change the measurements because then your item is not going to fit correctly so measurements always always stay the same now you're going to um have this rectangle selected you're going to right click and you're going to go where it says duplicate. You made another shape and you're going to put this one right next to the first rectangle we did. And remember, you can always use your keyboard to move up and down as well. And you're going to put it right next to the first one. While that one is selected, you're going to go back up to width. And you're going to type 5.45 enter. And on your height, it's going to stay the same. Once you have this one right next to this one, and again, you can use your keyboard. Now, the first rectangle that we did, right click it and duplicate. Duplicate it. I'm sorry if I don't say it right. Y'all know I do have a Spanish accent. And you're going to put the third rectangle right next to the second one i am going to select all my three rectangles and move it more a little bit to the side because it's two to the right and i have it centered right here make sure all your rectangles are connected correctly 
Now we need to make the borders as well. I'm going to bring this down more. Now you're going to go back right here on your left panel again to the square click on the square and make any square rectangle on your page make sure you go back and press on your arrow select your rectangle on top here where it says width select it and you're going to type 10.49 enter And on your height, you're going to type 0 0.67, enter. And then this rectangle is going to go on top of the rest of the three rectangles on the top. Again, I also recommend you always having a notebook with all your measurements written down. Once you have that rectangle on the top, Select that rectangle and duplicate it, duplicate it and bring it to the bottom. And once you do this, your template is done. And all you have to do is design it however you would like. That is your template right there. Now to design your chip bags, all you have to do is click on the rectangle and on your right panel there's like a paint um what is it called it's called a fill panel so you will is the third one down and this is the colors and you have all these colors here on the first rectangle is all the colors if you click on the second one it has like this ombre gradient colors and on the third one it has like different patterns in which you can save patterns on here from Google and stuff like that you can save it I will do a separate tutorial on how to save your own patterns I don't want to make this video so long what I do is if I'm working really fast on something and I don't have images saved on my computer all I will do is I will go to Google and I would go to Google and look up different backgrounds so let's say I want a rose gold background I will type that into Google so rose gold background and I will look for any background that I would like let's say I want my borders to have this glitter um, background so I'm going to click on the background you have to make sure you click on it and I am going to copy and paste it I'm not even going to save it so I don't make the tutorial fast I mean um, so long you can save all these backgrounds like I show everyone before I do have a tutorial how to save your own backgrounds from Google but I'm just going to copy and I'm going to open up my silhouette and I'm going to paste it here once I have it here paste I'm going to make it shorter so I can put it and don't be afraid to use the sides of your um, paper you see how we have the mat with your paper the sides of your um, computer screen is gray you can use all this space you can add as many stuff on this background all around here don't be afraid to use all this space the only thing that you don't want to put is inside your paper because everything that's inside your paper that's what's going to print so anything outside your paper you can use all that around so right here i will press my top border and on your left panel there is like a dropper so i'm going to click that dropper and i'm going to click inside the background that i just added here now you as you can see my border now took the same background but it looks distorted so when you're on your panel right here on your left that says open the fill panel which we are in if you click on the third one where it says fill pattern you're going to click on that one right here it says advanced options you're going to click on advanced options where it says aspect ratio the first rectangle you're going to click on that now you see how my border changed exactly how my border looks it took the entire border just like that right here where it says scale in the bottom you can bring down the scale or you can bring it up if I bring it down it will look like that let me try to zoom in so you can see what we're doing so on the scale if I bring it up come on 
So if I bring it up, it's going to look like that. And if I bring it down, it's going to look like this. I am actually going to leave it like that. Now, the bottom border, I'm going to click on the bottom border. I'm going to go back to the left panel where my dropper is. I'm going to click on the dropper and I'm actually going to click on the top border so my bottom border could stay just the same way. When you use this dropper, you are filling in any, any shape with the same exact background that you're touching. So let's say you will go here to the fill panel and you don't like none of these colors and you want like a specific color, let's say rose gold or gold or burgundy, you would just go look for that color on Google and bring that color into here or background and you will use this dropper to actually fill in that color or this dropper for the specific color and the dropper on the left is for the entire background i hope i make sense you can always ask me questions down below and i will do more tutorials on this i know this is a software that everyone gets confusing but trust me is it is pretty easy to use i am going to go to google again and i am going to um bring in a pattern um like any let's say i'm just gonna use this one real quick so i'm going to copy and paste on the silhouette studio so i'm going to go here and i'm going to paste it oh it bring in the wrong one sorry guys so now i have this one and i want my middle to have this exact background. I, you, you can go right here and make it smaller or bigger using this like that. But see, when you start moving these images, they start getting distorted or lose its shape. So all you have to do is click on the middle rectangle. Again, you will click on the middle rectangle. You will go right here on your left panel, click on the dropper, click on this image that we just inserted you will go back to your fill panel click on the third square where it has all the polka dots you will click on there you will go where it says advanced options on the aspect ratio you're going to click the first rectangle and you see how it inserted my um, background but it looks kind of weird so right here all the way in the bottom it says pan pattern and it has like four different um arrows you will click on that and then a little shape in the middle of your rectangle is going to show up let me zoom in so if you see that little circle just click on it and then move it so you can move this up and down to see however you want it to fit here up down however so we're going to put it right there and you're going to let it go and then right here on the scale, you can go up a little bit. Make sure you have it selected. And on your scale, you can go up just a little bit so everything fits perfectly fine. Now, let me zoom out. The sides of your chip bags, you click on the rectangle. And then you will go back to your fill pattern and click on the first rectangle. Now you have a choice of all these colors you can choose from. If there's a color here that you don't like, hit the dropper right here, right here on your fill panel. Hit the dropper and come right here and you could pick any of these colors that this background has. So let's say I want this background and see it filled up that rectangle with the same color right here. I'm going to click on my other rectangle. I'm going to go back to the fill panel dropper and I'm going to click on this color so it can have both colors and see how you filling in your chip bags and stuff like that again guys this is really easy to do and I'll do my best to bring more tutorials of this software so y'all can um, use it so now I am going to select my entire chip bags and under my fill panel on your right there is another panel with the open the line style panel. That's, these are the lines. Right here on my lines, there's the colors. I am going to put no fill. So all these lines are no filled. And that's it, guys. All Your entire chip bags right now is filled with all the colors you need. To add your individual images, let's uh, bring this over here more up. 
to add your individual images if you already have them saved in your computer all you have to do is go to file you will go to merge now open you will have to go to merge if you click on open like you want to open that means you're going to open a new file you have to go to merge when you click on the merge your entire um file folder is going to show up and then from here you're going to add your images go to the document or folder that you have your images saved and I'm going to click on this image and I'm going to click on OK once you click on OK your image should come to the front now you see that this image has a white background so we will have to trace this image because you don't want the white background on it. I'm going to bring this image to the side of my page. And let me go down a little bit more so you can see. So I have her here. Now on your right panel on, let me see, one, two, three, four, five, number five, it says open the trace panel. You will click on that one. It will say select trace panel area you're going to click on that one you're going to select your entire image that you want to take off the white background you're going to select it and now we're see how your image turns yellow when it turns yellow that means that's what you're going to keep you need to bring up the threshold on this image you want the entire image to turn yellow so right here it says threshold you're going to bring it up more and bring it up more until your image turns entirely yellow At least that outline, you want it all to be yellow. No, see, that was too much. You cannot bring it up to 100. And it's still kind of fuzzy on the side, so bring it down more. Okay, once you, your um, outline is all yellow and you're satisfied, right here it will say trace, trace outer edge or trace and detach. You will click on trace and detach. That's where you're going to click at. Then it's going to detach everything that's not in the white. And yes, it's going to take some time because it's loading and doing whatever it's supposed to be doing. So we have to wait till it detaches. See, once it does this, it detaches. I don't know why this came over here. So now once you move your image, it's detached from the white background. You could click on the white background and click on your clipboard and click on delete. Now, you will size the image smaller. and put it where you want it to be. Just like that. If you want to type in a font, or you have all these extra whites um, left the background, make sure you delete all that also from the sides. To type in any font that you would like, you will first have to click on the A that's on your left panel. You have to click on that A first. And then on your right, there's another A. And here is where you're going to click the font that you want to use. Again, you can download um, free fonts from thefont.com. I have a whole video on that. Before you download fonts from there, you have to make sure that your whole Silhouette Studio is closed. Don't have it open. Download your font and then open up your software and they should all show up. If you have Silhouette Studio open while you're downloading, they're not going to show up. So please make sure that 
you have your Silhouette Studio closed. You will click on a font that you want to use. I'm just going to click on anything. I don't want this video to be so long. And then you will click anywhere on your screen and then you will start typing. So let's just say I want to say welcome baby Ari on this. Once you have your font typed, you're going to click anywhere on the screen so it could unselected. You're going to click your font again and bring it let me zoom in so you can see actually what we're doing and when you see that it has a red outline don't worry about it the red outline does not print like that that's just so you can see what you're doing and actually the red lines means where your machine cuts but when you're printing these red lines don't show up and if you get um, kind of distracted you can always uh, put the red outlines to no color right now I am have my font selected i will go back to my fill panel and you could click any of these colors that you would like your font to be and if you don't like those colors again you can go and click on your dropper and click the color that you want these words to be and you could go back right here under the fill panel which is the lines and you could put right here that you don't want um, no outline and then make this smaller and make sure that everything you add in the middle of your chip bag stays in the middle rectangle because if not when you close your chip bags it goes to the back of your chip bags and you want to make sure everything is centered so I have this right here I just put welcome baby Arianis and on the sides you can always add your nutritional facts you can always find nutritional facts on Google and I do have a tutorial how to make your own using Microsoft Word and it'll be the same thing if you want to do it on Silhouette Studio so again you will go to file you will go to merge and then you go to the folder that you have your nutritional facts saved Click OK. Your nutritional facts are right here. So you can add these on whatever side you want. You can also type anything else back here and you need to add a barcode. So let's go to file. You will go to merge. Click on the barcode you would like. Click OK. You can find barcodes also on Google or Etsy. And I will do a tutorial soon on how to make your own barcode as well. So there you go. Right here on the side, you can add another image. So you will go to File. You will go to Merge. And then you could also add another font. So you will go to the left panel, click on the A, go to the right panel, and click on the font you want to use. And then you will start typing. So thank you. for celebrating with us. Then you will, oh, hold on, I forgot the K right here. And 
and I actually if you misspell something all you have to do is double click on the font and it turn green again so then you go back here where you misspelled your word and just retype it there you go now see how this is I don't know if you can see I'm gonna change the color so y'all can see better so I will click on it I will go to my fill panel on my right and I'm going to change the color to for it I'm going to go under the shape fill panel and I'm going to go to the outlines I'm going to click on the colors and I'm going to click on no outline the no outline is that um it's like right next to the dropper it has like little lines or whatever that's the no fill so you see how these words are. I don't like the orientation on this. So I'm going to go back to my right panel on the A. And in the bottom where it says the B, the I, and the U, you can change how your words are. So I'm going to put it like this. And then I am going to put it on this rectangle. And make sure all your words stay in that rectangle. And this is something simple. You're going to design your chip bags however you want. Now, you are all done. Now, see, if I want to move my chip bag, see, it's going to move by itself. And I want everything to be one image. So drag your, um, click on somewhere on the screen, click on it, and then drag it around your entire chip bag that, to make sure everything's selected. You're going to right click and click on group. And your entire chip bag is going to be grouped together. Once I have my chip bag grouped together, what I do is I make this chip bag fill the entire paper all the way on the top, all the way in the bottom. Make sure you stay inside those red lines that your paper has because that's where it says that it's um, where your page border is at and then on the sides I will bring it out a little bit more but you have to leave some white part there because that's where your chip bags are going to overlap when you close your chip bags so it can look like a real chip bag once you have it like this you have the option to save this as a pdf file if you don't have a printer at home and you are printing somewhere else you do need to save this as a pdf file if you're sending this to your customer and um you, if you're sending this to your customer, you also need to send this as a PDF file as well. I do have business editions. So all I will do is I will go to file. I will go right here where it says save as. And I will go to save to hard drive. Where it says save as type, I will click down and I will click on portable document format. And then I will name my file and I will save it. And once it's saved, you send it to your customer. They cannot edit this. And you could also save this to a USB stick um, and take it to any local printing place. And this is it, guys. If you have any questions, feel free to comment down below. I'm sorry if I went too fast. I just didn't want to make the video so long. I will go over different steps here and there. Um, if you have any questions or concerns, just um, comment down below. Like I always say, I do have a Facebook group called Andrina's Creations Crafting Lounge. If you would like to join, if you like this video, please give me a big thumbs up. And also, if you haven't subscribed, go ahead and subscribe so you can be notified when I upload my next video. Bye bye, guys.